Gun shop employees of Reddit, what are some red flags that have caused you to deny a sale of a firearm? Serious. In the times before the instant background check, we just took their word for it. The guy answered yes on the have you been convicted of a felony question. I told him he couldn't buy a gun. He asked for another form so he could answer no. I told him to leave and never come back. Either it was an ATF sting, or he was too stupid to own a gun. I run my own small shop and am thankful to be able to screen my own customers effectively. However, sometimes my license info gets entered automatically into large retailer databases who don't vet their customers and blindly drop ship me guns with no notice, dumping the responsibility on me. One case about a year ago, a major retailer I won't name did exactly this and also left out the packing slip by mistake so I had no idea who the gun was for. I received the box during a particularly busy Friday late in the afternoon and only had time to log the pertinence while I sorted out my existing appointments. I jotted down a note to call the retailer Monday morning, since I was leaving first thing 6 a.m. Saturday for a weekend trip. Monday morning I come home to half a dozen messages on my answering machine, all from a very irate individual yelling incoherently into the phone from a millimeter away demanding I give them their gun. After an hour of analyzing the contents of these voicemails I pieced together that they had purchased this extremely high quality high point carbine and expected it to be delivered directly to their door, no questions asked and involving no ID or background checks. I called the retailer, relayed the contents of the voicemails, got an apology and promptly returned the gun to them on their dime. Then I called and attempted to speak to the would-be buyer, who was impossible to communicate with and belligerent beyond comprehension. I clearly informed them as politely as I could I declined their business returned the gun to the retailer, and didn't want any future business from them. They uttered some choice words and hung up. But wait, there's more. The next morning an hour before opening time this person shows up banging on the door, demanding I give them their gun. Without getting into too much detail they were asked to leave and only finally hightailed it when the threat of police involvement was raised. Every single thing about this was sketchy as hell, and I'm glad it's the only bad apple I've had in going on 10 years in the biz. I used to work for an big box outdoors store. It wasn't our store, but one in Fort Worth we got an email about it. Woman called store and warned them her husband was on his way to buy a gun to kill her. Thankfully she called before they got there and he got denied. No idea what happened after that though slash. Already posted one here but another doozy was sketchy bloke comes in and wants to look at lever action shotguns. Before this thing's even left my hands he's smashing the lever as hard and fast as he can. I asked him to not do that and had to explain to a grown as man why it's not okay to roughly handle a brand new anything that you haven't bought. He's got one of those five-year-old kids he keeps interrupting us talking cause he wanted to hold the gun. I turn my back to double check price and when I turn around I'm looking down the barrel of the shotgun the father's handed to his kid and hear the click of him dry firing it at me. Ripped it out of this kid's hand and told the dad to get the fuck out and dad starts abusing me cause I hurt his kid's hand when I pulled the shotgun away. Having his kid dry fire a shotgun in my face isn't that big of a deal apparently. Finally one that I can answer. I was living in Alaska for a year and picked up a part-time job in the winter as a gun counter clerk at a national sporting goods chain. One slow evening a kid comes in, by kid I'm talking college aged, and starts staring into the pistol case. I ask him if he wants to see one and that I'd need his ID to verify his age etc all's going well, it's obvious he's new to guns. I ask him what his intended purpose and use was in order to find what might suit his needs. He says he wants a cowboy style gun and all he wants to do is to go shooting to let off steam, that his mom teases him for always being on the computer and growing up a pussy. The more I talked to him the more I realized he was just a closet weeboo slash otaku. My brother's a full on weeboo so I told the kid about how they had a big group of friends who met once a year during Axe or Comic Con SD. Kid was straight up starry eyed, told me he wishes he knew people like that that if he had friends like that he wouldn't have bipolar issues. In the end I told the kid not to buy a gun, save up his money and GTFO of Alaska. I swear I've not had a happier customer, dude didn't even buy anything. Back when I used to work behind the counter I had a guy who wouldn't stop sweeping customers and employees with the muzzle of firearms he asked to see. I warned him several times to stop. When he deliberately aimed it at a customer I immediately took the pistol away and kicked him out the store. That kind of unsafe behavior is something I won't tolerate and I certainly denied sales back then and I will deny training if I see it on the range now. Our range rents out firearms for trap slash skeet shooting. Had a lady come in asking strange questions like does it hurt if someone gets shot with it and also acted weird when she answered a call and told the person that she was at a coffee shop. She left, 
and we called the cops to file a report of a suspicious person. Might have been suicidal. The lady might have wanted a painless death, and had a past of suicide attempts thus lied to hide that she was at a place where she may have intended to harm herself. Drugs. Had a guy come in one time with his family and wanted something cheap. He had all these track marks on his arms, scabs on his face, and was really out of it. I did my best to tell him no without making a fuss and finally had to say something about the track marks in front of everyone. Not a good day for him, I guess he'd been telling his family they were from something else and they believed him. Gun license photo in Australia, looked nothing like him and he couldn't tell me the name or birthday on the license. I asked because there was the lack of resemblance between him and picture and a big red flag when he picked up a rifle and pressed his eye hard into the scope to look through it. Just walked out with his head down when he was told we're keeping the lost slash stolen gun license. Guy came in looking pretty ill. His face was bright red and he was sweating profusely while struggling to breathe. One of my employees was convinced he might be having a heart attack so he asked if he was okay. This guy went ballistic and cussed him out for bothering him. One of the many insane things he yelled was, what? You got something against red people? My employee backed off and let us know that he was. Unhinged. He walked over to the gun counter and asked to see a revolver. He immediately pointed it at my formerly concerned employee and said, I wonder if this would be good enough to put a bullet through the head of that nosy son of a bitch? We had already been filled in by our plainclothes loss prevention guy who was now following him around after his outburst. When he made the threat I didn't bother asking him to put the gun down. We have to assume the worst so I took it from him. I couldn't risk giving him any chance to load it in case he was concealing ammunition, you never know. He started screaming that he was going to get a gun and kill us all. Our loss prevention didn't take kindly to that and attempted to physically restrain him until the police could arrive. It took four of us to hold that big bastard down. Needless to say he was arrested for terroristic threats and assault. I like it when they make it obvious for me and, hopefully, joke about shooting at schools slash protesters. It happens more than you would think. Also, don't send your friend you were browsing with to try and buy the exact same firearm that you wanted 15 minutes after I told you I couldn't sell to you. Worked at a large outdoor store in their firearms section. Had a customer come in and ask about a precision rifle chambered in .338 Lapua. Then while handing him his background paperwork he asked how far can this bullet hit a human-sized target? He said he was buying it for big game hunting, a little sketchy I know, I gave him some answer oh at least 1000 yards, but I'll get a definite answer. Walked in back to find the manager, who was the only person who can deny a sale, explained what happened, manager had him fill out paperwork and get his ID then denied sale immediately after. And the kicker was he used his Chinese passport with a student visa as his ID. Police were called and they took it to the FBI. I used to work in a large outdoors retailer. I had a man come in for a gun that refused to give me his ID. Also didn't want to give me his name, address, date of birth or any other info. He said he should just be able to answer the questions on the background check and that should be all I needed. Sale denied. His mother asked us not to sell him a gun. Damn. We get lots of people who use us for transfers. They buy online and then the gun comes to us and we handle the background check. One guy had done a transfer with us previously and I got a bad feeling about him. Nothing concrete, he just bugged me. A few weeks later, he called again for another transfer. The gun was coming from Alaska, so I told him it was going to take a bit longer than usual and I'd call him as soon as it arrived. The next day, he called wanting to know if I had a tracking number yet, I didn't. The Alaska FFL only did business by mail. How the hell a letter was supposed to get to Alaska overnight, I know not. Again, I told him to be patient. Fast forward a week and he calls me three times. He let slip that the dealer in Alaska won't talk to him and he needs me to be the go-between. That's a red flag. Sellers normally communicate with buyers. He was acting really sketchy and impatient so I had decided to deny the sale. So, I called the dealer because this was getting sketchy. The dealer told me he cancelled the sale. Interesting. Never had that happen before. The dealer said and I'm quitting here that guy is a serial killer in the making. He'd harass the dealer several times a day starting on the day he ordered the gun. The dealer said the guy knew the sale was cancelled because he told him and refunded his money. That settled it for me, I wasn't interested in handling any transfers for him. When I finally blocked his phone number, two days after talking to the dealer, I had 35 missed calls from him. Reverse Situation Knife dealer at a gun show and a guy wanted to trade a fairly unique handgun for knives. A dot little geeky, but no major red flags. No problem. 
he picked out his knives which resulted in a good sized stack of blades. Talking to him while bagging them he says he wanted to trade the gun for knives because I never get the chance to shoot people. I already had his info and reported him to local PD and had the gun checked. He came back clean and so did the gun. In the end, just an odd fellow. I worked behind the sporting goods counter at a Walmart. I can't remember exactly what made me think the guy was trying to buy for someone else, but the sale was suspicious, so I declined to sell him a long gun. He immediately got irate. He started yelling at me and slamming his fists against the counter demanding that I hand him a gun. Sure I'm going to hand the belligerent man a firearm. He demanded to speak to management who escorted him out of the building.